Yesu asifiwe. Tusarimiane. God is good and all the time. And that is his nature. We welcome you this evening to a midweek service led by the Women's Guild of Happy Valley Parish, the Ica Presbytery. We are going to start with our uh, song for Women's Guild. I ask the prison worship to lead us. <laughs> of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 11 says be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God failing to observe his commands his laws and his decrees that I'm giving you this day let us pray our Lord and our God in the mighty name of your son Jesus Christ we have ourselves before thee this evening with thanksgiving in our hearts Thank you for giving us a chance to observe the Women's Guild Week, King of Glory, with the words which you have given us. Guide us, let the Holy Spirit of God be upon us. We are praying this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We call upon the praise and worship to take us through.
the throne of grace this evening oh god we honor you we adore you father because there is none above thee oh god in heaven and on earth jehovah it is only you to be worshipped and to be glorified jehovah master we honor you we give you glory we give you honor you've given us hope jehovah god when we were hopeless you've encouraged us jehovah when we had we were discouraged king of all glory we worship you we honor you oh god you've been our comforter in our times of mourning king of all glory you've given us plenty to eat and to drink almighty father we worship you we honor you and we give you glory and we give you all the adoration oh god we humble ourselves before you king of all glory because despite the good things that you've done unto us oh god we have still fallen short of the glory and failed to obey your word king of all glory how we pray that almighty father you will cleanse us oh god with the blood of the son that was shed at calvary jehovah master so that we shall be blameless before you oh god and we shall walk in righteousness king of all glory we honor you we worship you father because of the many times that we come crying to you for forgiveness oh god and you never tire to cleanse us king of all glory each and every time we are before you oh god we worship you and we give you glory father lord we have failed to obey your word we have failed to walk in righteousness king of all glory wash away our iniquities oh god we beg for mercy king of all glory this evening almighty father we know that you're merciful god because we have seen your mercies oh god we pray that you'll wash us oh god so that we shall be acceptable before you oh god almighty and everlasting father we want to worship you because of your goodness in our lives oh god you've given us plenty to 
feet. You've given us a, a roof of our heads, oh God. You've given us clothes to wear. You've given us shoes on our feet, oh God. We worship you because you've given us the air that we're breathing freely, King of all glory. You've given us uh, the gift of good health, oh God. You've blessed us with so many things, Almighty Father, beyond even what we had prayed for and even asked from you, King of all glory. We worship you because of your goodness in our lives. We thank you for our families, oh God. We worship you even for the, woman guild, the woman's guild, King of all glory. Father Lord, we worship you and we give you glory and we give you all the honor, Almighty Father. We want to surrender our nation before the throne of grace. Jehovah God, even at this time that you're facing difficulties, Almighty Father, we have seen you. You have not failed to provide unto us, King of all glory. Almighty Father, we want to surrender our nation before the throne of grace. We pray, Almighty Father, that God, where we have failed to obey your word, King of all glory, as a country, Almighty Father, oh God, we pray that you'll forgive us, King of all glory. We surrender even our leaders before you, oh God. We surrender our president and his deputy, Almighty Father, and his government before you, Almighty Father. We beg for mercy. We beg for your grace to be sufficient for them, O oh God. We pray that your wisdom and your knowledge shall be sufficient for them, King of all glory. Watch over them, O oh God, and guide them in all the decisions that you make regarding this nation, O oh God. And even at this time, O oh God, that we are facing this pandemic, King of all glory. We leave it unto you, O oh God, because we know that you are faithful. And we know that, Jehovah God, these things are not happening beyond your, your control. We know that you are watching over us and there is that which you want us to learn king of all glory jehovah master we are waiting upon you O oh god to come and intervene in our situations king of all glory we know that you're faithful we know that you love us so much O oh god and you've got a reason for where, as to why everything is happening king of all glory we surrender everything unto you O oh god because we have got nowhere else to run to king of all glory we worship you O oh god we give you glory and we give you all the honor we want to pray almighty father even for our families jehovah god even at this time when most of us are at home O oh god we pray Pray that Almighty Father, you, your provision shall be, shall be sufficient for us, King of all glory. We want to pray for love. We want to pray for unity. We want to pray that Jehovah God, we shall walk in oneness, O God. Jehovah God, you've been faithful in the past. We want to pray that even now, O God, we know that you shall be faithful unto us, King of all glory. Provide unto our families, O God. Provide us with sufficient to eat and drink, King of all glory. Almighty Father, we surrender ourselves unto you, O God, because we have nowhere else to run to, Almighty Father. We want to remember Jehovah God, even them that are homeless at this time, O oh God. We want to pray that, Almighty oh Father, you shall be with them and provide unto them, O oh God. And that, Jehovah God, you shall use each one of us to be a blessing to them, King of all glory. With the, whatever little that you've provided unto us, O oh God. Father Lord, we pray that you'll give us the spirit of uh, sharing, King of all glory, so that we shall be a blessing to each and every person that is before us, O oh God. Almighty oh Father, we want to surrender ourselves unto you, O oh God. We cannot forget them that are sick at this time, King of all glory. Father Lord, we know that you're the mighty healer. Jehovah Jehovah Master, we pray that you'll stretch your mighty hand of quick recovery upon their sick bodies, O oh God, and that, Master, you're going to heal them, King of all glory. Father Lord, we cannot even forget to or commit the families that are affected by the COVID-19, O oh God. Father Lord, we pray that you remember them, O oh God. Stretch your mighty hand of quick recovery upon them, Father. We surrender even their families unto you, King of all glory. You've got the power, you've got the authority over their lives, O oh God. We pray that you'll give them peace, you'll give them comfort, O oh God, and even the energy to continue taking care of their loved ones, King of all glory. We cannot forget to pray even for them that could be mourning at this time, O oh God. They've lost their loved ones, King of all glory, out of many pandemics, King of all glory. Father Lord, we pray that you remember each one of them, O oh God. We pray that as your word tells us, O oh God, that you give us gladness in our times of mourning, O oh God. We pray that you remember them, King of all glory, and be their comfort, Almighty Father. We surrender ourselves unto you, O oh God, because there is none above you, King of all glory. Almighty and everlasting Father, we want to remember even our young children at home, O oh God. We remember the youth, King of all glory. Almighty Father, O oh God, when, at this time when they are not able to do much of activities, King of all glory, O oh God, we pray that you shall be with them, King of all glory that you'll give us oh god the grace and the, uh, and give us uh, give us wisdom and knowledge oh god to guide them oh god in all the activities that we shall endeavor them to do at home king of all glory we know that you're faithful and you know that god you shall be with us and walk with us king of all glory we want to surrender the woman's guilt before you oh god we pray that jehovah master as uh, we conduct our activities king of all glory jehovah god you shall be with us oh god and your holy spirit shall be our guide oh god we pray that you shall help us to be a blessing to our community to our family Families, O oh God, in all that we do, King of all glory, because we cannot make it without you, Jehovah. We release ourselves unto you and we wait upon you, Jehovah God. We want to 
uh, remember even the giver of your word this evening, Jehovah Master, we pray that Almighty Father, he shall be filled with your Holy Spirit, Almighty Father, and he shall speak your word, King of all glory, as you want it to be spoken, O God. And even as we sit to hear from you, King of all glory, we pray that you shall open up our inner ears, O God, that we shall not just be hearers of your word, but we shall be doers of the same, O God. We surrender ourselves unto you, King of all glory, that you may use us for your purpose in heaven, O God. We worship you and we give you glory, we give you honor. This is our prayer of faith and thanksgiving in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This God, Shash. Our readings come from Deuteronomy chapter 8, from verse 11 to 20. I who am taking through, I'm Mrs. Grace Duarte. Let's start reading. <coughs> Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, fearing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Others, when you eat, are they satisfied when you build the fine houses and settle down, and when your hearts and the flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied. Then your heart will come proud, and you will forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Chapter 15. He led you through the fast and the dreadful wilderness, that thus they are the waterless land with his venomous, with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness. Something you, your ancestors had never known to humble and test, to test you that test you that in their head it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, "My power and the strength of my heart have produced this wealth for me." But remember the Lord your God, for it is who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so, so confirms this His covenant which he saw to, to your ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord, you are God and follow other gods, small g, gods for small g, and worship and bow down to them. I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Chapter 20 at the last verse. Like the nations, the Lord is destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for you. For not obeying the Lord, you are God. May God bless his word. Our second reading comes from the book of James, chapter 4. James, chapter 4, from verse 1 to 10. I who is taking you through, I'm Lydia Jogona. I'm saved. And we read. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that, battles, that battle within you? You desire, but don't, you, you desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your precious. You, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be afraid of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he, he generously wrongs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says... God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourself, then, to God. Resist the devil, and he will free from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hearts. You are sinners, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grief, mourn, and wail. Take your laughter to mourning, and your joy to groom. Chapter, uh, verse 10, it's the last. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up. That's the word of God. God bless his word. Amen. We shall now start and welcome the preacher of today, our minister, by singing the hymn song.
praise and worship kindly guide us I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good evening. It is a momentous time that God once again has granted us during this midweek service to share the message from Him as we appreciate the Women's Guild for the great work they have done over the week and having taken us this far. We do believe the ministry of the women is a great ministry that touches many hearts, much for the less fortune, and also for the young ones who are brought up in the honor of God and the manner and model of glorifying God in their fortitude. We therefore welcome you all that we join together with them and as we support them in their endeavor 
expanding the kingdom of God to the ends of the world, and much more in our parish, Happy Valley, we congratulate the Women's Guild for their great effort and work they are doing, which is felt across. May the Lord richly bless them and do them good. I am born again, I am Duncan Mwangi, and the Lord Jesus Christ is my savior, and he has given me this hope once again of the eternal life, that he has enriched me with his kindness, his love, and his care that makes me every day feel I want to remain in his arms as my guide. May we pray as we go forward. Gracious and everlasting Father, we thank you and we worship you this evening. Having gathered us together to worship you and to adore you, in reflecting your love and your care and the journey we have gone together with you as fraternity of Christians, and particularly today, when we are under the ministry of the women. Lord, we thank you for your greatness. We thank you for your kindness. And we now surrender to you that you may minister to us individually and nourish our hearts and our spirits, lifting them up to reckon with your will. Minister now we surrender, keeping our hearts and our ears attentive that your message may get deep and encourage and charge and admonish each one of us. For this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we know the theme for this year, 2020, from the Women's Guild, was well launched by our general assembly moderator, the right reverend Julius Mwamba on Monday. And we are therefore running a clause with it, having known a message well coined for the season, a message that comes with power, and a message that comes with new strength, encouragement, and great more, a challenge to us to know and to learn where the Lord has taken us from and what we need to keep up so that we do not lose the track that the Lord has put us on. The message today being, forgetting not the Lord you are God. Forgetting not the Lord, you are God. The two books that were used to extract the theme from being Deuteronomy chapter 8 and the Epistle of James chapter 4. We will go through and in a while we be able to understand where God needed us to get and to know and to understand and equally keep to our lives. The book of Deuteronomy is one of the five books of the law which we refer to as the Pentateuch. After the people of Israel came from the land of Egypt, through to the wilderness from the book of Exodus, we now find their journey climaxing in this book of Deuteronomy. And another new chapter starting in the book of Joshua where a new life begins after Joshua took over and helped them cross over to Jordan. <clears throat> this word Deuteronomy means second. From the Greek word drawn from the Septuagint 
background of the Hebrews that the word deuteros means second. And the word nomos is a Greek word meaning law. Therefore, it's like the first law being given a second time. Because the first law that was, that was given at Mount Sinai, they went through it across the wilderness. And now they are coming in to another juncture when Moses is giving them a parting shot by reminding them where they began with them and where they are and what they need to keep to their lives. This book having been written by Moses, apart from chapter 34, which speaks about his death, and of course he couldn't have written about his death when he is dead or alive. Therefore, it is believed that it was written by other authors and much most believe it was Joshua. This book records Moses' last words to the people he had led for over 40 years in the wilderness before his death. Therefore, it is a very important book in the lives of Israelites in the new land, and equally well quoted and vast quoted in the New Testament, for it is mentioned for about 59 times. Moses spoke to the Israelites while they were encamped on the plains of Moab. Just before Joshua took over this commandment and led them into the land of Canaan, which was a promise by God, which we equally equate with the promised land that God has given to us a time like now in the new dispensation of grace, our Canaan being heaven. Moses is exhorting or challenging the Israelites never to forget God but rather to remain in love and obedience to his ways. We find chapter 1 through chapter 5, Moses is recounting the experiences of Israel under Moses' leadership. He also recounts God's providential and miraculous care of the people during the journey from Egypt to Sinai. He then details their defeat both spiritually and militarily in the Kadesh Barnea. And unfortunately, on a very sad note, we find that this book finds its epilogue with a devastating message giving a prophetic word that though God has worked with these people, Though this word has been severally repeated upon their ears, they are likely when they get to Canaan, though they are reminded severally not to forget their God, the word says they will eventually still forget. What a sad news. That a word and a message of challenge is well opposed to us and eventually we fall victims of the very snares that we are guided and are devised and admonished and extorted never to fall into. Moses in his second speech after chapter 5, he continues to tell the people of Israel where God has taken them from and what they need to observe to retain this fellowship and the benefit of working together with God. One of the importance of this book being a repetition of the law and the statutes of God was number one because when these people lamented and complained in the wilderness, God with his words 
proclaimed that all those who have complained in the wilderness will not see the new land. And we all know that 40 years is not a short duration. So majority of the people who came out of Egypt had died in the wilderness. Again, going in line with the words of God which are true. For God never used or speaks his words in vain. That apart from Joshua and Caleb, none who came from Egypt, including their deliverer, the Moses, entered the new land which was the promised land. Therefore, these words are being spoken to a generation that probably even never witnessed the coining of these statues at Mount Sinai, neither the commandment of God. Therefore, they are coming anew to them, though repeatedly have been taught to them in the wilderness. Now they are hearing it again in a more fresh way as a new generation that is about to get into conquest into Canaan. Moses stands therefore on the threshold of a new future in the land of Canaan. And Moses exhorts them to love and obey the Lord in order to experience life in all its fullness. He reminds the people how obedience will attract God's blessings and how disobedience will equally attract an equal portion of curses from God. And this is best detailed in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, where number 1 to 14 as verses speaks about the blessings, and the bigger portion speaks about the curses due to disobedience. By recalling what God has already done for the Israelites in delivering them from bondage in Egypt, Moses portrays God as both all-powerful and all-compassionate. God kept the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. The Bible indicates this was meant to humble them. It was meant to test them to find whether they can maintain their hearts anchored in God. Whether they would keep the commandments of God and that is why he said, because you saw me give you, you saw me deliver to you these oracles and statues. And now it seems you are running away and being led astray. I am restoring you, but I'm keeping you again in the wilderness. So that if you don't send keep to it, you will not enter the promised land. For the promised land are for those who are eager to obey God and walk in holiness. They were therefore reminded not to forget the journey the Lord had taken them through victoriously. Of course, the journey was not without many challenges. However, God had brought them from nothing to fullness of wealth in this promised land. In a nutshell, may we go through the message that Moses needed strictly to deliver to them when he told them not to forget their God. Seven areas, they were reminded that they were not to forget about. One, that God who brought them from the slavery in Egypt should remain attached in their hearts. In all these areas, they were told, never forget the Lord, you are God. And which are the reference points that should make you reef and get anchored and holding on unto this God? Number one, because he delivered you for, from slavery in Egypt, where you remained for a tune of 400 years, under the bondage of other people. You could not benefit them from the labor of your words. You could not be appreciated for what you are doing. You didn't have freedom, but God brought you out of such hands. Number two, 
that you should not forget God who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness. In his effort to deliver you, he took you through a terrain that was so terrifying, that was so fiery, and it was full of serpents and full of scorpions where your lives were endangered, but he remained your protector. Even a time like today, we need to remember God has delivered us before from scary experiences. He is still allowed and willing to deliver us even from this scary experience of COVID-19. If he did it with Israelites in the wilderness from scorpions and the serpents, he still can from, uh, to us from this COVID. Number three, not forget the God who gave them water from the flinty rock in the dusty grounds where there was no water. Water is said to be life. Human body constitutes about 75% of its body mass being water. So without water, you get dehydrated and you die quickly. And the wilderness, there were no indicators and signs of oils and water. But the Lord took them through in those scorched heat. Yet they never became dehydrated. They never died because God took them through as their provider. He quenched their thirst. Number four, never to forget God who fed them in the wilderness with manna which their forefathers and their present fathers who we are from Egypt could not understand what it is. When God promises I will do Great things that you have never comprehended. Neither your mind can fathom. This word God is saying that even your fathers cannot understand what manna is. Even today, in the experience of lack, deficiency, God can still provide beyond our experiences and knowledge of what can satisfy us. He is able to see and provide as the creator. And number five, he told them, never forget God who clothed, we, who clothed you with unworthy clothing. The clothing, not like the one we put on today and they fade tomorrow and they get on the other day and we cannot put them on anymore. But God put them in clothing that lasted for 40 years in the wilderness never losing their taste and their fashion and their status. What a mighty God. What a powerful God that should remind them never to look on what they are going to find on the way ahead of them because God who took them through difficult times, providing in every manner, even when they fight plenty, he still remains the provider in that new land. Number six, he is reminding them that they should never forget God who prevented their feet from swelling. Majority of us cannot walk a long distance. And most of us, the farthest probably we can walk, maybe is 10 kilometers or so. But these people walked for years and years in the wilderness. They never developed swellings or bristles. The Lord became their protector. He prevented them from damage. He prevented them from sicknesses. Number seven, the Lord who healed you from all your diseases. We do know when the serpents came in and started biting them, the Lord told his servant to raise up a snake that would become the healer which today still signifies the symbols of all hospitals, that the Lord is the healer who raises a healing power in the wilderness. Having experienced this, shouldn't we trust on this God in the new land, whether it is froze with milk and honey, him who did it in the wilderness is still the same who is doing it in this new land. All this 
could not be achieved through man's effort, but it required God's intervention. Therefore, Moses is reminding them, it is not by your strength, it is by the will of God. It is by the power of God. We go to the next episode. Why and what was the risk? What would emanate them from running away? From keeping the will and the status of God. What is it that could have caused them to divert, to divert or forget? One is when you get to the new land, you will not be on daily basis be looking up unto heaven for manna to flow. It will be plenty and at all times. Therefore, it will not be seasonal. He reminds them, you are likely to forget the Lord when you get your eat and you get it in full. Vyakula wakati mwingine vina tuondo wakatika we mawabwana. When our stomachs are full, I remember when I was young, I often used to be told, usije ukala, ukanza kuonyesha mungu tubo. And it happened with the Israelites. That when they got there, they were likely to eat and be full and forget their God. Number two, that would have caused them to forget their God, that they are told prior. They are not told when they are there. They are told mukifika kule, haya mambo ya naweza kuwapata. Lakini kia wapata, msije mkaongozu wanayo, that you forget your God. When you build good houses, and you live in them, in the confines of our homes, in the confines of our parasho homes, we are likely to forget God's provision. Number three, when we settle down and we start having possessions, the herds and the flocks of animals, and we start counting how they are multiplying, and we end up forgetting it is God providing, and we start looking at them like they are all we want. Our wealth, our provisions can lead us away from God. Number four, when you acquire silver and gold, and they multiply, and all the things that you may get that are likely to lure you away from God and forget his ways. Number five, when you are filled with pride, when your hearts get lifted up because of your achievements, and you start feeling, I don't need anybody. I don't need to pray. When I need to go to hospital, my money can afford. When I need to run to America, my money can take me there. Many things that we achieve, many titles that we acquire, the status that are likely to make us more proud, and we think we are adequate without God. Number six, self-confidence. Bragging of their own strength and of their own achievement. Feeling that now I am self-sufficient. May the Lord help us because all this characterizes the wilderness that people tirelessly pursue, ignoring God's way and walking on their way. These are the very same that we are told by James in the next letter that we read. The consequences, as Moses is telling them, of God forgetting their God was when you get into Canaan and you get so entangled by those things, you are likely to worship other gods and serve them. You are likely to stop worshiping your God of Israel who delivered you and become idolaters. Therefore, those are few consequences. And number two, he is telling them when you worship them, then God will destroy you with your success and will make you to perish. When you turn away from God, he is going to make you to perish. You will not enjoy your bounty. You will not live long. 
He is going to cut short your life. And number three, he is telling them, you will lose your gains. When you think you have it all, he will make sure you don't live to enjoy what you have achieved. God therefore followed his words when he was taking these people from Egypt to Canaan in fulfilling his promises. He took them from wilderness where there was barrenness, where there was dryness and hotness into a fertile land with brooks of water, with fountains, with springs. And this land that he, they were brought into never experienced scarcity. The bread was readily available without limit at all times. When we look at the book of James, we are finding that the Bible is telling us James was lighting to the Christians who we are, who we are converted but due to persecution, they ran away. And now wherever they are, they are disintegrated. They are warring among each other. They were fighting one another. Why? Because the work of the enemy is to disintegrate the unity of the believers. Is to separate them and make them individuals so that he can fight them individually. And they are likely to lose their focus when they are franchised. James is telling the Christians who faced this kind of harshness and pain that unlike those who are gathered together, he is telling them, can you listen to the voice of God? Many will come and teach you falsehood, but remember, the teachings that are true, give instructions and get to practice the best instructions. For the Christian's faith requires such matters. James is telling us to avoid friendship with the world for it will draw us away from God. The very same thing that Moses was telling the Israelites. That the form of seeking the pursuit of world achievement is falling in love, getting into friendship with the world which he equated to adultery. Usinzi, waganu, with the world and he called it spiritual infidelity. For we are likely to forget God and fall in love with our properties showing covenantal loyalty to the creation instead of the creator. And this what was the risk of the Israelites. God requires a willing act of accepting the authority of God. Envy, as James puts it, causes evil desires in us and a division that leads to fights and loss of focus by the Christians. We are called to understand and to know these schemes of the enemy and to resist the devil and accept the spirit of God and get into the armor of God which we shall put off. And again, he is advising us to look backward from where we have come from, where God snatched us from. And when we stand in our position today, we also focus ahead and look where we are getting. If we can credit the past with God as our victor, then we entrust him for our future that he takes us through without our own energy, without our, without our own strength. And God will care for us when we entrust our future to him. He will help us to have genuine repentance and calling and walk in righteousness, seeking no other way but to walk with him. Brethren, as we conclude, we are reminded that God is our everything. Whatever we may have acquired, it is not by our own, it is by God's grace. 
Just like a fish outside the water cannot survive, we too, outside God, we cannot survive. May we anchor our faith in God. May we hide our lives in Christ and never forget where he brought us from and we keep up with him for the remaining journey until he takes us to heaven where we all long to be. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we pray. And before we get into it, I want to take this moment and commit those who may be willing to give and surrender their lives to God for a long life with him. You can repeat this prayer. Dear Lord, I come to you. I'm a sinner. I have seen your love, your kindness, and your compassion towards me. I surrender my life, seeing where you have brought me from, and I entrust you my life for the future ahead. Crest me with your blood and put the right spirit within me that I may ever be your child. May God bless you. Let us pray. Our dear Lord, we worship your holy name. We adore you for your glorious and your mighty. You gave us an opportunity. You gave us a chance to reflect on your work with us as a woman's guild and as we minister to the world and to ourselves. The Lord, you have been so faithful to us and you have indicated to us without you, we have no future. We have no fulfillment. We have no enjoyment as we reflect in line with your word and message on Sunday. That Lord, we need your Holy Spirit. Help us this evening to anchor our faith in you, O oh God. That through your Holy Spirit, we may never be derailed from your truth. That we may never forget your deeds to our lives. Heal the sick as you did heal the Israelites. Help us to love one another and show compassion with one another as you did our God. Help us, O oh Father, rather than fighting each other and becoming envious for the achievement and the gains of our brothers and sisters. But we hold together and call upon you day and night. May you lead us in the path of your righteousness and reach us with your fullness. Make us, O oh God, celebrate your goods. Make us, O oh dear Father, anchor our togetherness in your dear Lord, that we shall not be victims of the enemy because he diversifies and he disintegrates our togetherness. Dear Lord, help us to walk in this new experience of COVID-19, together as one entity speaking one language, committing our welfare to you, and calling upon you to walk in righteousness as you heal the sick and as you encourage the discouraged and downtrodden and as you lift up the souls of those who are about to give up and those who are going through hell and turmoils of life as storms of God and grave them. Lord, encourage your people. Encourage your servants and let there be a reason to celebrate a new day for God we make it our effort Never to forget your ways to us. Never to forget your love for us. And even to our siblings and our young ones and our parents and our spouses, oh God. And all neighborhoods, we anchor our faith in you. Strengthen us, heal us as our Lord, and lead us in ways of victory and plenty and bounty. And let them never lead us away from you but always to remember when we achieve one more gain, it is because you have enabled us forever be glorified, forever be exalted, almighty Redeemer. For this is a prayer of faith in Jesus Christ. And may the peace of God that passes every human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in the knowledge of God, that the blessings of God Almighty, our Creator, and the blessings of son, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessings of the Holy Spirit may be upon us and dwell us and keep up with us 
reminding us never to forget the ways and the deeds of God in our lives and to follow through generations today and forevermore. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you and may you keep up with the ways of God never forgetting where God has brought us from and where we are. Thank you.